So tell us a little bit about who you are. Okay. My name is Shmaila Hanif, and I'm an assistant professor, and uh, I am a course director for medical microbiology and immunology courses at uh, CAICOM. I joined uh, CAICOM back in 2018. I got my uh, PhD degree in medical microbiology from Kuwait University, and then I uh, moved to U.S. in order to do my postdoc. So I got my uh, postdoctoral degree or training from Oklahoma Health Science Center. After that, I got an opportunity to work as a, a lecturer at uh, uh, University of Texas, Austin. Then I got a, an opportunity to become an assistant professor at Bastyr University, California. Um, and then in 2018, I joined the UPike. I like to uh, travel. I like cooking so those are my hobbies I can speak four languages so this is me well, that's really exciting you know you have this great title now course director professor when you were a kid did you want to do that as a kid or what do you want to do as a kid when I was a kid I wanted to do a lot of stuff I wanted to be a lawyer at one time I wanted to be a pilot so I can travel all over the world I wanted to be a doctor because my family wanted to see me a doctor. But at the back of my head, always there was that I need to do PhD. Maybe I was not very much familiar with the PhD, except that it's a terminal degree. It's the highest degree, which I need to get it. So that was there all the time. Hmm. Uh, so even as a kid, you kind of knew that you're supposed to be doing these things. Um, you know, we all of us have different types of dreams, um, and some of us have a dream job. Okay. So for you, is there a dream job? Um, if so, what is, what is it? I would say what I'm doing right now is my dream job. I mean, I always wanted to be in academia, especially when I started my master's degree and when I was doing my PhD and during my postdoc training. I always wanted to be in academia but I wanted to be in an institution or university where I can uh, teach, or mostly, or the institutions which are focused on teaching rather than on uh, research. I love to do the research, but I want to do research on my own pace. I didn't want to be in an institution where you have to be writing grants all the time or running after getting the money or grants in order to be able to pay for your postdoc or uh, your technician in the lab. So I would say what I'm doing right now, it's uh, my dream job. I'm at a university which is mainly focused on, uh, um, on teaching and then at the same time you can do uh, research on your own base. So that's currently my dream job. In future, Maybe going towards the administrative roles or leadership roles, maybe that could be. So, but currently, yeah, what I'm doing is a, my dream job. That's fantastic. You know, we all have these paths in life, and you know, very rarely is it a straight line. Did anything in life spur you on to really kind of focus you on this, this route of the academy and the teaching? Basically, I born and brought up in Kuwait, and uh, in Kuwait they don't uh, give you a Kuwaiti nationality or citizenship. So in Kuwait there is only one uh, public university, Kuwaiti University, and it was very hard, or still it's very hard to get into that university, especially if you are expat. So I was lucky, like my elder sister, we got a scholarship uh, seat, so I got admission there, and I have been offered uh, uh, from by the dean of the uh, engineering college to attend their college. But then I refused. I said, no, I don't want to be in that field because I never liked the math. So I knew that I want to do something in uh, medical sciences or in medicine. So I decided to pursue my career um, in microbiology. So I got my uh, bachelor degree in uh, microbiology. And then I moved to the uh, Faculty of Medicine, and then I got my Master's and uh, PhD in Medical Microbiology. 
So I think those are the things which uh, put me on that path, opportunities basically. Mm. In, in, a, in a strong no to an engineering college to say, this is not what I want to do, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so when you think about your life's mission or purpose or calling, however you want to describe that, can you put that in a sentence? What, what's your life about? My calling in life, I would say teaching, teaching medical school, I mean the medical uh, students. Uh, I love to do what I'm doing right now. Teaching is my passion and uh, I, I, I feel that it's a, something where you can be creative. You can just uh, take the uh, highly uh, complicated topics and put them in a simple way for your students. So I enjoy to uh, do that. So I, I would say teaching is calling in my life. Mm -hmm. So we all have people who make a really big impact on us, mm -hmm. you know, from a professor to whoever. And I wonder for you, who are one or two of the maybe most influential people for your life and to, for you to understand what really your life was about? Well, there are so many people. <clears throat> I mean, I cannot just take one or two name, uh, names. Uh, there are many people throughout my life who influenced me. Um, I would say my parents, first of all, uh, my parents always supported us. I mean, I have two brothers and four sis sisters, so my parents are, they were behind us all the time. They were very supportive. They always wanted us to get our highest degrees and uh, they wanted us to be successful in our life. Uh, my siblings, they were really supportive throughout uh, my life. So they influenced my life as well. Uh, I would say my mentors. I have been lucky throughout my life or my career to have uh, very good mentors. Uh, I can mention uh, one of my professor who was my mentor during my master's and uh, PhD degree, Professor Sal uh, Salim Mustafa. So he is the person basically who encouraged me to come to U.S. to do my postdoc training. So that was back in the, at the time when Kuwait University first time they opened the postdoctoral program and I was the first per person who has been selected or has been offered the position in his lab. But then he uh, asked, said to me, no, you have to move on and uh, explore other opportunities. So I would say he had a big impact on my life. Uh, other than that, there are many people throughout. I mean, I even can take the name of our previous associate at Pew Pike. He was the person uh, who, per who encouraged me to get my MBA degree from Pew Pike. So, because I was really not sure whether I want to do it or not, because that's an additional degree, totally different than uh, basic sciences. But he, he was uh, the, the person who encouraged me, no, you can just give it a try. So, as I said, there are a list of people, I mean, who were there throughout my career, so mm -hmm. those mm -hmm. are the ones. Yeah, as, so as these mentors or people have been really important to you, your parents supporting you to get your degrees and taking that huge step, I mean, what was it like for you as a, an established professional to make that huge leap to a whole different country, to a to, to a you know apply and go after your dream. I mean, it takes a lot of. I would think it takes a lot of guts, right? A lot of courage to do that. So, what was that like to make that jump? Well, I don't know how I made those decisions. <clears throat> now, when I think about all that journey, uh, when I think back, I'm not sure what was there. I mean, I think it was just believe on God and uh, follow your heart. I totally agree with you. Taking that kind of the decisions was not easy, but I did it, and I'm happy. And I'm happy that I took those uh, decisions and I took the opportunities, availed the opportunities, basically. I guess maybe <clears throat> in some ways, um, as a person who already likes to travel, 
that big jump is kind of part of your life anyway. Maybe, right? <laughs> maybe you can say that. Um, what would you say is the most important thing that helped you figure out what you're supposed to do? What? Uh, I think just having a big dreams, dreaming that you should be having or having a, your aim in front of you, that puts you on the path where you want to be. So I think that's that, that's the thing. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, when you tell your story, here you are, you have all these gifts and skills and very smart and doing very well and scholarship and all this, um, and people kind of encouraging you in that right way. Sometimes people don't have as clear a path. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, a lot of questioning and wondering. So when you have a person that you are connecting with and they say, you know, I have no idea. Actually, I'm just completely clueless about what I should do with my life. What advice would you give them? I would say that they should uh, explore themselves first, see what kind of the talent they have, or they must be uh, God gifted with some talents, or uh, they should see themselves uh, what they like to do, what they don't like to do, what is their passion. I mean, if they want to join the medical school, why they want to join the medical school? Do they have a passion for it or they are doing this just because their parents want them to be a doctor? So I think I would advise them just explore the opportunities, avail the opportunities and see what makes them happy. That's a really good path and advice for life. Well, we are really appreciative that you're here teaching our students in uh, someday, maybe a dean of a medical school or something like that up your future, but I know that you'll be traveling and all that, so uh, just very excited for you to be here, and uh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. Thanks for this opportunity.